Hey, it's Sarah, and today we are doing our late July garden tour. And I'm doing this in the morning so we can try to beat the heat and not be sweating too much out here. Um, so if I have a couple crusties in my eyes, I just got out of the bed. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, but I'm gonna give you a tour of my Zone 7 Virginia garden today. And um, there's a lot of stuff happening. Just like every month, you know, things have changed. Uh, plants are getting bigger. We've worked on some issues that I've been having. Um, but also, I've got a couple new plants that I've added into the mix, so I'll show you those too. But I thought today we could start out here um, at the raised beds that are at the end of the driveway, and then we'll work our way around to see all the beds and all the containers and everything. So let's get going. So here's just an overview of the three beds right here. You can see there are some plants happening. We had trouble with these beds. I was having um, a lot of yellow plants, plants not growing. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit about what I did to deal with that, but let's go ahead and start back here. And we can just kind of go section by section. So these are a couple tomatoes. We have a beams yellow pear here. You can see this is growing up out of the cage. And so is this, which is a, what is it? Oh, it looks like a purple bumblebee. Um, so I've gotten like one tomato off of the purple bumblebee, nothing off of the beams yellow pear. These are a little behind of the tomatoes I'll show you a little bit later that we have growing elsewhere, but they do have fruit on them. So you can see we've got those friends there, some tomatoes down here, um, and same on the purple bumblebee. It's just that they're a little bit behind on ripening compared to tomatoes in other spots in the garden, and that's because all the plants out here have had some trouble. Down here we have some peppers. Now I'm not exactly sure of the mix of which peppers are which between the, this and the other side. But I will tell you, I know we have a couple lemon drops in here, Brazilian starfish, and sugar rush peach. I just don't remember off the top of my head which ones are where. I'll be able to tell once they start fruiting, obviously, which we do not have happening yet, but we do have some flowers. And I did write down what I did. I just don't have it memorized. Uh, so these plants were some of the ones that were having problems, uh, but now you can see they're nice and green and lush and um, we got some flowers coming on here. So again, a little bit behind of some of the other pepper plants that you'll see later on in the garden tour, but they seem to be making a comeback. So it's really just gonna be, do they have time to produce fruit before the frost? And let's go ahead and talk about the rest of these beds and then we'll get into the nitty gritty of what I did to save some of these plants. So um, here we've got some sunflowers. This was not the plan here, but I pulled out the tomatoes that were not too happy and put these in and they're sprouted up. Um, they, you know, haven't grown too tall yet, but I'm hopeful that we'll have some sunflowers here. We have some cucumbers here and these are really taken off now. There's about three plants, I think, in here and we're starting to get some flowers. So no fruits yet, but we are well on our way with those. And then we'll just swing on around to this last section. We've got some zinnias here that are starting to do something. Had to give those a little help too. And then these are some more of the pepper plants. And again, they're getting nice and lush. We've got some flowers coming on. So um, things are happening. And the stories on these beds is really that I got some what was called topsoil and what was called compost um, from our local like sand and gravel place. Uh, and I was a little suspicious of it. Um, the topsoil I knew was not great, but I thought the compost would help it out. But the compost was also like really barky and stuff was just not growing. So I had to dig all the dirt out of these beds um, and put in new soil and stuff. But basically, you know, the plants were already in. So I was like digging around the plants. It was a whole, a whole thing. Um, but even after that, the plants still were not taking off. So I decided to give them some help with some nitrogen because they were all just like not growing and very yellow. So based on those two things, I was like, okay, I think that's the issue. So I got some fish emulsion and um, it's just this kind of concentrate that comes in a bottle and you dilute it with water and you water the plants with it. Um, and I did that once a week for like three weeks and it's just remarkable. I mean, if you look from last month's garden tour to this month's garden tour, the plants are actually growing now. They look like what they're supposed to look like. Um, the cucumbers, I'm very confident, you know, cause you can plant cucumbers late and that you can grow, you know, new plants. A lot of people end up pulling out the first round of cucumbers they planted and putting in new plants after they kind of get tired out. The peppers are really the question um, because peppers take a long time 
we still have a while to go before the frost. I mean, in zone seven, our frost comes in like mid to late October. So we have some time, but it's just, you know, are they gonna be able to produce enough or any amount of fruit, how much fruit? Um, they're a little bit kind of against the clock because they were so delayed. So that's gonna kind of be, you know, we'll wait and see, but I'm gonna leave them in, we'll see how they do, and you know, maybe they'll surprise us. And either way, I learned a big lesson of not to use that stuff um, in my garden beds, and maybe I'll just use it as mulch, because I feel like it's more like mulch. Um, but also, you know, getting some ideas of how to solve some problems because I've never had that kind of nitrogen issue before. Um, it's not something I've had to deal with and with the way I garden and I'm sure for you too potentially like you don't know how to figure stuff out until you have to deal with it personally. You might have seen other people and what they deal with and have like some concept of what might need to happen but you don't necessarily know exactly what you need to do so I had to figure it out um, and we have the neighbors driving by. Uh, <laughs> they're like why is she out there talking to herself with the camera? Um, but you know, I kinda had to figure it out and it seemed to work. Um, so that I think is a win because we're learning things and we love learning. Okay, so all that to say, let's head to some of the other areas and look at some more plants. Oh, a little bonus out here I forgot about. These are some more zinnias. So these are the queen lime red zinnias. I planted them at the same time as those other ones that are teeny tiny. So you can see that the beds have some problems. This, that was just like random dirt and gravel. They're fine. So don't know what that means, but Let's see if we can kind of get down in there. You can see there's a little bud poking out. Oh, and over here too, down in there. So we should start seeing some of these opening up pretty soon. Now let's talk some containers. So here's some of the front yard containers in the galvanized bin. I'm so happy with these. Like they have been doing really well. Um, so we've got three different tomatoes here. We'll just go down one by one. Oh, we have a little bee in here. Hello, little bee friend, bumbling about. I love when you just find them, you know, doing their work. So fun, okay. So, you know, these are growing, they're tall. Um, I've kind of been using old tights to tie them up, but th I mean, this is coming out totally horizontal, so maybe we need to give this guy its own stake. Um, but this is a uh, Beans Yellow Pear. We've gotten a few of these off now, but they have such a rich yellow color. Very happy about those. And um, I've put some leaves in here. This was just yesterday. I put leaves in to mulch around these because uh, I hadn't done that yet. So you can see the leaves are down in there. Hoping that will help with just moisture and all that kind of stuff. So we've got that. This is a blush tomato here. So we'll get down here. On the bottom so we've had a few of these too um, you know all the ones off of this truss so they are ripening I love these because they have this you know oblong shape they're rather large um, and they have this striping and you can't see it as much now because these still need a little bit of time but once they are like ripe ripe the red striping is a little bit more pronounced really really attractive um, and you know they're a pretty meaty tomato Oh, and down in here. This is um, a basil I had in my starter tray. I just needed to kind of tuck basils in places. So actually we'll swing back around. Put one of the purple basils in there. It's doing okay. But this basil here, so happy, look at it. So that's fun, you know, tucking in plants wherever we can. And it's, you know, happy to be with this tomato here. And then this one is okay, not great. I think I know what the issue is. So this is a, green zebra, let's get down here at the bottom. This is a green when ripe tomato. So you can see it's got this striping. Um, this one back here is starting to ripen. It's starting to get a little bit more of a yellow tinge compared to even the one next to it. I think you can tell the difference. Um, so we haven't had any to harvest yet on this, but they are growing. Now the thing is, is that if we work our way up to the top here, it's not growing as tall and let me kind of swing around and see if you can tell. See right, right here, let me, right here. I think that's the main stem and it's like chopped off. And I didn't do that, at least not intentionally. Um, I don't know what happened. I don't know if some squirrel came out here and like chomped the top off of it. So I think that's part of the problem because once you cut that top, it, the plant kind of stops doing what these are doing, you know, which is growing like up, 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 up. Um, so I'm wondering if that has, you know, 
is going to mean that we're not going to get as many fruits off of this plant. It is putting out some side shoots, so we'll just have to see, but we do have some tomatoes down there. A couple new containers. These, I had not intended for these to just sit here, but I kind of potted them up here and I haven't moved them, so that's just the reality of the situation. Um, these two are very cute. I'm very happy when I saw these. I was like, oh, those are cute. Okay, maybe I need to buy those. Um, this is a Zatar oregano. This is all stuff I had started um, and had just been kind of slacking on getting it in its pots. So that's a Zatar oregano, and it was pretty sad, but it's coming back. Um, they were suffering just not being in a big container. This is a German winter time. Seems to be doing okay. And then this one over here is really, really happy. This is an Italian oregano. So I'm excited to have, um, you know, more of these herb containers around. I just think they look really nice, especially in the terracotta. Um, the green, I don't know. It's really pretty and smells nice, gross food, all the things. We love it. More containers over here. So this one here, these are those Korean peppers. And um, let's see if we can get down in here. You can see so many peppers. And I've never grown these before. I wasn't quite sure how big they would get. But it seems like this is like the mature size because the ones that have reached this size are not growing anymore. We have one down here that's starting to get a little red tinge. So they will turn red. You can eat them at any point. Um, we have not picked any yet, but I think I'm gonna start picking on these and trying them and see how they are. Um, so those are those, but you, they're just loaded down. So happy. So, you know, that, that is great. The branching, the number of peppers on these plants, really, really fun. Uh, over here, this is our Calamondan orange. It rained last night and it's kind of splayed open. It didn't, doesn't normally look like this. It's not normally snuggled up to the rosemary like this. It's normally sticking up, you know, kind of fairly straight. So hopefully that will perk up over the course of the day today. But it has put on a lot of new leaves, like all of this stuff here, this light green here at the end. This is all new stuff that has come in the past couple weeks. So it seems happy, it's growing. Now I have noticed um, that it has dropped a few fruit. I don't know if that's typical, but it hasn't dropped all of them, like getting there. You can see that one's still on there. So, um, so far so good. I haven't killed it yet, so we're happy about that. And then down here is our rosemary. And it is just bushing, branching, so happy. Um, and I love just walking by and kind of brushing by it and, you know, getting that rosemary aroma. It's wonderful. Um, we'll just keep moving back. So more tomatoes over here. This is a Japanese trifle black. No ripe fruits yet, but it is growing. It's setting fruit. Got a little basil patch down in there. I've been picking from that. That's been great. Uh, this here is a sun gold tomato. This is the only one the squirrels have really tried to mess with. And, um, you know, oh, you can see there's one right back in there. There we go, kind of. So I've been harvesting off of these. Um, and we have several of these around that I'll show you. But it is sprawling. Like, just go up and up and up. And they're, like, all branching out to the side here. It's just, like, a whole thing. So um, those seem pretty happy. Black cherry tomato, lots of unripe fruits, no ripe ones off of this yet. And then right next to it, we have this one, which is, I'll call the eye candy cherry, because its name is a little unfortunate. Um, it is related to something else now that it was not before the tomato got named. Uh, but it is growing, and there's flowers. Um, but no, I mean, some like tiny, oh, there we go. You can see one tiny ripe tomato there, but not really much so not sure about that but you know it doesn't seem unhappy it's just not fruiting the way I would like and one thing about that is like I think that might be the only one of that variety I have in the garden um and so it's hard to know like is it that variety it just didn't like this spot you know you don't know if it's like oh maybe this just isn't a good one for me or if it's just one of those fluky things because any single one tomato plant can struggle for you know whatever reason and you just don't know um and when you plant a lot of something there's always some that are better than others but when you just have one it's like i'm not sure should i plant this again but um you know we'll keep monitoring and see what happens with that uh so now let's move on to some of the front beds so this is a good example actually of what i was just talking about the tomatoes here not as tall. I mean, we have a whole whole line of them and they are not doing what other tomatoes around the garden are. It's that same soil. The stuff is technically growing, but just not super happy. I've given this some fish emulsion too. Um, I don't know that it's made a difference, but 
you know, they're growing just not as fast as the others. Uh, similar down here with the beans. Growing, I've picked a few. They're definitely, you know, fruiting and stuff, but just not what you might expect. You can see some of the ones down there, but that just lets me know, one, you know, for future, don't use that soil. But also, like, this bed is just going to need some extra help, um, and, you know, we'll just work on it. We'll just keep working on it and getting the soil better and better and better here, and, you know, year after year, we'll make some improvements on it. Um, this over here is a whole different story. So this is like maybe my favorite spot in the garden, one of my favorite spots right now. This is the bed from last year, and so it's really great, you know, it's, it's, it's established, the soil in here is good, and the plants are so happy. So we've got okra in here. Look at this okra. It's getting so tall. Um, the Japanese beetles, there's some right there. They are chewing on it a little bit, but they're not demolishing the plants, and I just kind of try to kind of knock them off when I see them. But let's see if we've got any flowers today. Oh, we do. Oh, but it's kind of facing this way. Let's see if we can get in here. Look at that. The okra flowers. They're stunning. I, just that alone, you know, makes it very ornamental. This being a red variety, the red stalks with the green leaves, very pretty. And then look at the okra. That one needs to be picked. So nice. This is the, uh, I think it's called bowling red okra. I'll have names of everything in the description, so don't worry there. You can definitely check down there if you're interested in any particular variety. But these are so fun. We've already picked several okra. Um, and they grow really fast. You can see there's another one there that needs to be picked. They grow super fast. Like once the flower opens, it opens that day, closes at night. The next day you got a little okra. And then a few days later, it's a full size okra. So very, very happy with that. Um, let's, maybe we'll work our way around this way. So this gap here is where the uh, snow peas and snap peas used to be. Um, and those died back because they're spring thing. And um, I did let them get like really brown and dried out and then just pulled them. And I think that might have helped with the Japanese beetles. I think if I'd pulled them when they were still like feasting on it, it may have been an issue. By the time I pulled them, they were like, oh, this thing's dead. I don't care about it. So I think, you know, after I got that pulled out, just the structure of the okra and then these eggplant that we're going to talk about here in a second, I'm just, I love looking at it. It's so pretty. Um, so I've got to put more stuff in here considering which, you know, fall crops I might want to put in. So it's nice to have this little open patch here that um, we can do some stuff. These are the eggplant. Now we have not picked any yet, but we're getting very close. Look. Seeing their little like striped purple and white ends coming out here, very exciting because you just know what's coming and there's so many of them. And I just think they're so stunning, such nice structure and so pretty. So that's great. These are Mexican sour gherkins. They're cucamelon. Um, so I've got them growing on the cage here and they are, you know, trailing up doing their thing, so hopefully we'll see some of those shortly. And then let's just, um, well, how about this? We'll go look at this bed, because it's in the way and I don't want to walk over it. This is another cucumber bed, similar situation with the poor soil. You can see some of the mulch there. I still haven't moved that pile, because I just haven't, and that's just what the situation is. Um, just not wanting to grow, so I gave these some of the fish emulsion too, and it definitely gave them a boost. I've only done it once though, so we're gonna keep doing that and see if we can get these cucumbers going, because we still have time for them. Um, they just need to, you know, get a move on. Okay, let's like, I'm stepping across this bed. Woo, there we go, all right, squash. So these have just like blown up. They're just like so happy, and we get in here. This is the Costata Romanesco squash. I'm going to move a leaf, see if we can see anything. There you go. There's a little squash there. It's a green zucchini, but it has this kind of like a uh, speckled appearance and this kind of like ribbing or ridging that goes around it. Um, so we've gotten a couple of these off of these plants. I've got two plants here. You can see there's more flowers happening and no squash bugs. No squash bugs. I have never grown squash successfully because at the old place, the squash bugs were real. Like, they were not messing around. And I have not had any, I've seen them like one get in the house or one, you know, 
down in a certain area, but they have not attacked these plants. And I love coming out here in the morning because you can see, like, look at that pretty flower. Let's come around. The squash flowers are so giant, and I just think, again, so beautiful. So these are growing, they're happy, and it makes me very happy. Um, we've got some Thai basil down here. It's loving its life. Been really enjoying that. And then we've got a couple of peppers. This is a Jimmy Nardello. It's a sweet pepper. You can see we've got lots of peppers. They just need to turn red. And we'll kind of swing around and you can see this one is tucked in here between the squash and the eggplant. But lots of really nice sized peppers on, on this one too. And more flowers. So I think we're going to have a good number of the Jimmy Nardellos. Now, this squash here is not supposed to be in this path. I had imagined that this friend would go that way. And I've been trying to make it do that, but now it's at the point I'm like, I'm not messing with it. I don't want to hurt it. So it's just going to do this. And I just kind of have to crawl around it if I want to get to the eggplant. And that particular bed, that is like my little paradise. I just, I think it's the most successful single area I've ever had gardening. Like, usually there's always some problem or something that's not quite doing it. But that spot is so great. Everything's happy. Haven't really had issues other than the Japanese beetles. Everything's producing. It's just like, it's what you dream of your garden looking like. And um, it's it just, like I said, whenever I look at it, it just makes me so happy. Um, but also I think it's a good like thing to remember that you know I can have a spot like that and then I can also have a bed where the plants are dying so um you know sometimes it's just bed to bed area to area you're dealing with different issues and that's okay but sometimes you know especially over time and with some work and learning more and more as you do it you can get a space like that that I'm just like just over the moon about um okay let's move on we've got some more containers some more plants on the ground and then even more containers after that so let's go so first I think it might be nice to look at these hanging baskets. The nasturtiums have finally like come out. We've got some blooms going. These are beautiful but also technically edible. So um, I haven't tried any yet but they're supposed to be kind of peppery tasting. The flowers and the leaves. So those are nice. And then we'll kind of swoop here. This is uh, the Phileas Blue Pepper. Kind of compact, ornamental but also edible. We've tried some of these. They're spicy and according to people online they're spiciest at the purple stage and then as they continue to ripen on to you know orange and red they get less spicy have not tested that theory yet so i can't personally speak to it but i was really surprised like how much heat was packed in one of these peppers they're really nice um, and they look really pretty and if you have a small spot like a small container or like hanging basket they can grow because they're small peppers so um, these have been really fun we have come down here purple basil in here swing around this another thing I'm really excited about is the lemongrass let's see if I can get like a nice clear look at how tall that is haven't picked any yet um been trying to find some good videos about like how to harvest when to harvest during the season not just at the end of the year but some of these outer ones are getting thicker so I think I might try cutting some of them back and this will spread and clump because it is a grass so I also might I don't know I might play around with dividing it um, I want to try to overwinter some of it, so we'll see, but I think I will grow a lot of this because it just looks pretty. Like, you could grow this. People will think it's a decorative plant, you know, if you're in a spot where, like, you can't grow food plants in your front yard or something. Put this in, people are like, oh, that's a nice grass, but it's food, and they don't know. It doesn't hurt them. All right, we'll come around here to the other side of the steps. Another Phileas Blue back there in a container. This is the lime basil. I had a time with this. We finally got a few growing. I haven't actually used any of it yet, so I can't speak to how it tastes, but there's something happening and it does smell like lime. So to be continued on that, whether I would recommend it or not. This is a new thing since last month. This is the Perilla Pot. Uh, let me try to get so my shadow isn't on it. These were volunteers, I, and all the seeds I had, I could not get to grow this year for some reason, but I had these volunteers growing in like the mint pot, because the mint grew next to it last year in the container. That container overwintered because mint comes back, and then the perilla started sprouting up amongst the mint. I pulled those things out. They were teeny tiny, and you know, their roots were all bound up with the mint roots. I was like, you know, let's see what happens. Put them in here, and now it's just way too much. I think I need to thin some of this 
they can't even stay in the pot together. Let's see if we can get like a an overhead look at these. Okay, there you go. So you can kind of see what's happening. I mean, they're just really nice sized leaves. I mean, you can do a nice little wrap with those. Those look great, um, but there's just so much. Um, so good problem to have. Very exciting, especially because I thought I might not have any this year. The volunteers, man, they were here to save the day. Um, and then we'll just come out a little bit. That's a, just an empty pot there. Don't, don't mind that. Um, more peppers here. So this is another one of those galvanized bins. We've got, we'll start with the fish peppers. Continuing with the trend, these two plants back here on this side are much taller. Um, and not as variegated, but loaded down with peppers. Look at all those little peppers all over it. Um, just growing, growing, growing. And then this one here, so variegated, more bushy. I love the look of this one, um, but also loaded down with peppers. And you can kind of see how they've got that kind of stripey look, similar to the leaves. Um, and then they'll start to ripen and change colors. And then we have some with no striping. And from what I've read about this pepper, one of the reasons it was so prized is because, you know, a not insignificant amount of the peppers are actually just stay like this really nice uh, cream color, which you don't see a lot on hot peppers. So these specific ones that would grow on the plants were really prized for um, cream sauces because you could add some heat without affecting the color. So just a little fun fact. I'll link an article on the fish pepper if you're interested in learning more about it. I think it's a really, really interesting variety. Looks amazing. Has important and interesting history. Highly recommend growing it. Um, then we have just kind of solo out here with the fish peppers is this black Hungarian. And we were waiting and waiting. I mean, you can see there's peppers in there. They're that kind of purple black color. Really pretty. I mean, like people are like, whoa, that pepper is that color. That's amazing. But they're supposed to get red and we've been waiting and waiting, and waiting, and waiting. Oh, I went past. <laughs> it was hiding behind the leaf. Look at that. It turned red. Not the dramatic reveal I was going for, but you get the point. Look, so it's kind of this maroon color, and it seems to be done. Like, it kind of came in a little bit of a flush at the side, and it's kind of gone across it, so we'll probably pick this soon. These are also have a nice heat, not too intense. Um, I'm liking these so far, so. We'll just have to see what the red one tastes like because we've only had one of the the purple black ones so far. So that's the front yard stuff. Now let's move around to the back and see what we have in the back. I wanted to update you on the berry bushes I planted because I haven't shown you those in a little while. So I've got them in this little row here. This is to remind Jason not to run over them with the lawnmower because he has done that once. So they've already had a little bit of a trim, which I don't think they were too happy about. But these three are the um, blackberries and they are, what is it called? Crown. I'll, I'll put the name in here. Um, so those are here. And then we've got the fall golden raspberries here. Three of those. These are two that got run over by the lawnmower. So they're a little bit smaller. They're here. They're growing. I don't know if they get enough sun in this spot. I think I may have made an error in where I planted them. I was thinking they were going to get more sun than they do. You can see the sun is tracking across here and it will hit them soon. I just don't know if they're getting as much as they really need. But I've also read that they like a little bit of shade, but not a ton of shade. I don't know. To be continued. We won't really know until next year anyways um, what they do. But they're, they're alive. I just don't know if this is an ideal spot for them. Back kitchen garden. We won't even step in here. Let's just look over. There, there's nothing happening. You can tell. Like, down here, one of the Japanese red mustards, oh, two of them are trying to grow. They're not happy. I don't think they get enough sun over here. We'll swing around. We got this tomato. It is growing. Oh, the camera wants to look that way. Look this way, camera. It is growing. This is a sun gold, but it's fruiting, but not as great as it could be. So I think technically we can grow a tomato here, but it's not gonna be super successful. And then these two here are alive, but they're not doing much. So this is more of a, was a test to see what was possible. I think we're really only gonna be able to grow shade loving crops here. Um, and that's just the nature of it. It's unfortunate because whoever put this garden here, you know, this was here when we moved in, must have thought, oh, this would be great right next to the house, but it's too shady. So you don't, you can't grow a lot. Birdhouse gourd here on this side, not very happy, but if we swing around, we'll just go all the way around here. This one here is more happy. You can kind of see, let me back up a little bit and see 
if I can get the camera to adjust. Let's go up. Oh, you can't really see it, can you? Because of the tree. Oh, yeah, if I get closer, there we go. So it is growing, and if I climb up here, there are, you know, some birdhouse boards coming on. I just don't know if they'll have enough sun to actually do what they need to do. Down in the bottom here, leafy greens, pretty happy. You can see we got the French sorrel. It's growing. It's growing. This is a fun little, like, sweeping shot. Um, we've got the red vein sorrel. It's growing. So I'm not, you know, trying to eat on these right now, but... I do, you know, hope that they'll get established because they're perennial, come back next year and maybe this bed will kind of be a little bit on autopilot. That's what I'm hopeful for. Lettuce down here is just hot and going to seed and stuff. I just haven't dealt with it, uh, but I am thinking about, you know, pulling this out and what I want to try to grow here for a fall crop because this front side, like these two little step things, do get the most sun, I think, of this area. So, you know, we'll see what we can do this fall. I have some ideas. And now let's go check on the rhubarb. I honestly have not been down to see it in a little while because it's been hot. So let's see. Ooh, lemon balm here. You can kind of see it. It looks kind of okay. Maybe need to prune on that a little bit. Thyme down here. Those three little clumps look okay. The wild perilla is taking over. We have it. It grows everywhere around here. And you can see it is just made like a little blanket of this area. Rhubarb. Where are you, friend? Here we go. One in the back, continue, continuing to do well. This one is like, I'm okay. This one over here, not happy. But it's finally putting up a new shoot. So it lost a lot of its leaves, but it's putting up fresh growth. So it's not dead yet. It's still going. Um, just, you know, we'll be waiting and seeing, can they get established enough this year so that they will actually come back next year? And, you know, I guess I could come out here and weed and mulch and that might help them a little bit but you guys are tough you can do it right i believe in you all right let's head back up to the house now and we can go through what i have growing on the deck all the containers up there and that is also an area that's making me really happy so let's start in this corner uh, more tomatoes and peppers so these are two more of the black hungarians here so you know they're oh i didn't know this was here oh it's starting to turn red okay so we've got so you can kind of see how it's like you know starting to come across the pepper but it's not all the way there so that's kind of what the other one did okay that's exciting um so we got those they're growing we've got another purple bumblebee over here i've gotten a few tomatoes off of this there aren't any super ripe ones now but you can kind of see yeah let's get in there they start to turn red and they have this kind of red green striping happening and then if we swing this way sun gold here we've been getting lots of tomatoes off of here and this one, it's just going up and up and up. And can you even see it? I'm stepping on stuff on the desk and tripping over myself. I don't even know. I'm just holding the camera up above my head at this point. Hopefully, you can see the top of it. I don't know. but It is really tall. And I put a couple stakes on there to kind of help. But we got lots of trusses of tomatoes going all the way up. So, I'm just going to keep it going. I'm going to have to have a step ladder out here to pick some of those ones on the top. Um, so, that's the thing. And then in the little, like, herb corner here, we still have this mint. This is where the perilla was growing. You can see, kind of, um, some more little volunteers. That's what they look like. Those ones that I pulled up and planted out front. And now you see how big they are. Um, I just haven't dealt with this pot yet, but eventually I'm going to clear it out. We've got... Let's come through the mint here. We got our parsley pot back here. This, um, I'm just cutting it and it regrows and cut it and regrows, so that's happy. This is our mint here. I need to prune back on. This is the new mint I planted. Need to prune on this a little bit because it's getting a little, a little too big. Chocolate mint. That's looking happier. Got some nasturtiums here. They are not happy for whatever reason. I could try to give them, give them a little food, but I don't know. They're not loving life. Lemon thyme. More thyme that I still have not planted out. This is like a creeping thyme that I wanted to plant in some of our areas. Haven't done that. This is new. Some dill I seeded. It, I seeded it really thickly, so now I've been coming through and kind of harvesting to thin. And then hopefully we'll get down to a few good plants and let those keep growing. And then we've got our basil trio here. The Genovese. The purple. 
and the tie here in the back growing in their little little basil trio pot. And you know, overall, um, the thing I love about this stage in the gardening season is I feel like this is when I'm finally starting to see with a lot of the plants that vision I had of what I hope things would look like actually coming to life. And you know, the plants have got some size, you're seeing everything come together, the beds are getting fuller, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's really fun to see that thing that was just in your head and then see it there and be able to enjoy it. Um, but let me know what's going on in your garden, what's going well, maybe what's not going so well. I love to hear all that. I hope that you enjoyed this month's update and that you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!